Everything here is baked fresh in the house. What? What it feels like to be in charge of the kitchen is to never truly be in charge. You have a boss, you have other people, you also have guests. It's like, I like this dessert more, but they like this one, so I guess I'll keep making that one. Corner. That's what it's like being the boss in the kitchen. <laughs> My name is Daphne DeLon, and I'm a pastry chef in Los Angeles for a living. I arrive at 8 a.m. and I basically just come in, um, take stock of what we have, what we don't have, figure out my production for the day. Working in this industry, we always work weekends, so my weekends are for myself Monday and Tuesday, so that's when I would get my rest and um, go out, I guess. <laughs> so this is pretty much my pastry quarter. This is our own little corner. We have our ovens, our proofer, our speed wrap where we store everything that's gonna be baked or have been baked and it's cooling. This is my production list. It kind of guides me along what we're doing for the day. Here's the low boy. We have all of our desserts ready to be plated. Um, these are my recipe books. And today we're making the whoopie pie, so I'm just gonna find that recipe. I was going to school for psychology and a college best friend of mine just like, well, why don't you just go to culinary school? You like cooking. I'm like, I do? I guess I do. And so that was something that encouraged me to look into that. It's like, I'll see what happens. And then the rest is history. My family is Southern, so we do a lot of cooking just in general. I did do a lot of baking growing up. My mom bought me an Easy Bake Oven, so that was my intro to baking. <laughs> and I do have a great aunt that I would spend a lot of time in the kitchen with just because she spent a lot of her time cooking and teaching us things just by proxy. She was pretty much the matriarch of our family. And so just naturally being around her, you gain an interest. A lot of times being in this industry, I don't see a lot of people that look like me. A lot of times I'm the only black person, let alone black woman in this space. Some challenges that I face are just having to be assertive and like having to tiptoe around being assertive because people are always gonna perceive you as having an attitude or being too sassy. It's just like, no, I don't have an attitude. I'm just a boss and this is the way that things need to go or this is the way that you need to listen to me. In this industry, being a woman is also hard because there are a lot of men. It's basically ran by men and there are a lot of men around you. In my history of being in this industry, I've worked in both bakeries and kitchens. I've gone back and forth in bakeries. There there are a lot of women, and so it's definitely more like balanced in that way. But in kitchens, there's definitely more of like men and men energy. Welcome back, Martha. So every day, me and Martha come in in the mornings and get everything started. She'll get started on the bread, and I'll get started on pastry production. We'll help each other out when we need it. Also, we'll just like decide on what music we're gonna play for the day. She likes rock. No. And Johnny Cash. I like Beyonce. I thought we were saying, like, I love Beyonce. Here at Connie and Ted's, I've been working for about two years. To get the job, I actually had to do a tasting with the owners, Chef Michael and Donato. In the tasting, I had to make a few different desserts to kind of showcase my talents and my ability to work in a kitchen. And the kitchen was brand new to me, so that was a bit of a challenge. I made a orange cheesecake with the kumquat topping. I made my butterscotch ice cream, which is still on the menu, so I adore that. A typical path and career for baking and pastry, and just in kitchens in general, will probably be like entry level, which you come in and you do production, probably earn about minimum wage, whatever that may be in respective areas. And then you just kind of like keep your head down, work hard, learn things, take direction well, and work well with others. And then you work yourself into a salary position. Starting out in this industry, I think you can expect to make somewhere around minimum wage. <laughs> I've been in this field for over 10 years, so I am now at a salary position. Here at Connie and Ted's, I make about 80,000. In kitchen, you can do this job with or without culinary school. Of course, with some proper training, you do put yourself at a certain level to be taken a little bit more seriously. But honestly, you can enter into production and if you work hard enough, you can definitely progress up to a higher position. I personally went to culinary school because I was just honing in on my own interests and seeing what I wanted to do. Everything doesn't happen overnight. You actually have to be patient, work on your craft, work on it at home. A lot of my knowledge is self-taught and practice. I'm also proud of my trajectory and that I get to like run my own program here at Connie and Ted's. I decide what goes on the menu. So now I'm gonna show you how I make our sweet potato whoopie pie. All right, we are doing 
255 grams of butter. Have to be very precise in baking or else your stuff will come out pretty messed up. <laughs> For granulated sugar, I need 225 grams of sugar. It's nice to have two different types of sugar. It just puts a little bit more depth into the recipe. All right, now we're gonna just cream our butter and sugar until it's nice and fluffy. Now I'm gonna crack my eggs. A few teaspoons of vanilla. Vanilla is very expensive. So a gallon costs like 300 bucks. So my butter and sugar is ready. I'm gonna add in the eggs. Wait till they get nice and emulsify it in. All right, at this point we're gonna add in our pureed sweet potatoes. We do get these in fresh, so we just bake them off really nice and then puree them in a food processor. 400 grams, three quarters of heavy cream. We have all of our spices here. Some cinnamon, some ginger, some nutmeg, salt, then a little leavening, baking powder, baking soda. And then once it's mostly starting to come together, you'll add in your wet. Hands get a little messy, it's all right. The batter is all done. <laughs> Now I scoop. This is a portion scooper. We use it for ice cream, we use it for cookies, we use it for whoopie pies. Of course, these will expand in the oven, so you want to make sure you don't put them too close together. But mostly they should just be going a little bit wide and up. And I'll set my timer. Six minutes. I would make this sweet potato spice cake a lot for my family and for family events. And like for my aunt, she likes it a lot too. So basically I took that recipe and evolved it into like a whoopie pie recipe for the restaurant. A lot of time, the fish is like only a few more seconds. I'll wait right here. Beautiful whoopie pies, kind of look like cookies, but they're just a lot more soft. So for our whoopie pies, we have our cream cheese, buttercream here, which is our filling. Now that they've cooled down to room temperature, we can add our buttercream. So basically for service, how we would do, take a little Connie and Ted's paper, wrap it around, and then I want to plate just like that. So here's our spicy potato whoopie pie recipe. I feel especially proud of myself when I think about how far I've come, because actually being able to support myself full time with my job and actually doing something for a living that I love and I have a passion for. Oftentimes when I come out, they ask for the pastry chef, they're like, oh, that dessert was so good. Can I speak to the chef or can they come out? And I come out and they're like, oh, wow. Especially if it's like someone who does look like me, if it's a black person, they're very proud and they're just like so surprised and so proud of me. I almost feel like I just made like a new family member in that moment. And I do know that representation matters. So I'm very happy to be representation for all of my little black girls growing up.